Herb truly did see the beauty in everything. He was so passionate. Everybody trusted him. He made everything look a little better. Herb Ritz loved what he did. He was a genius for lighting. Always very enthusiastic. He had always a vision. He was a genius for shape. Also a lot of fun. And when you get all that into something, it makes Herb Ritz a very, very special person and a photographer, one of the best of all time. Herb Ritz, L.A. style. I mean, when you think of L.A., you think of Hollywood and glamour, the glitz of the West Coast and whatnot. Herb grew up in Brentwood, next door to Steve McQueen, so he had a particular ease with celebrities. It's kind of like being in a company town. Like, if you lived in a small town where the industry was coal mining and you were around coal miners your whole life, you would be comfortable with those people. Does it work? Uh, actually, it looks pretty good there. Well, Herb is a photographer that lives in this city and he's photographing celebrities. But one thing Herb Ritz is not, and that is a glamour photographer. He started something that's known as an anti-glamour style, bringing the celebrities outdoors in natural light. Jay. Looks good, like you're doing, Bellos. it's good. Yeah, there you go, and tonight's looking away. Herb's use of natural elements in the environment brought so much life to the pictures, whether it was holding a big thing of tumbleweed, whether it was putting that octopus on Jimon's head. It's simple shots, but they're just better than everybody else's. It's like, you know, Johnny Mathis. There's not a lot of tricks. He just sings better than you do. Yeah, you got yeah, whatever you want. Yeah, there you go. Herb was drawn to the elemental places, places where the elements, earth, air, water, and fire, come together. Most of it happened in Malibu, and then he got into the desert. He was very fluent in Los Angeles. He knew about the sky, and he knew about the land, and he knew about the beach. And keep walking a little, just on that line, wherever you are. Okay. It was just an innate part of him and his personality from having grown up here, where he knew at certain times of the year the light had a little softness or it was a little harder. He taught me a lot about light, where you can almost feel that it's not hitting you right. You know, they say Eskimos have so many different words for snow. If you took Herb to the beach, he would have a completely different idea about what the pictures would look like at any given time of day. He would actually want us to start around 11, come in, have breakfast, get her makeup ready, have lunch, and then start shooting because his light was the light that was between three and six. That was the golden light. He loved hard light. When you use hard light, it gives a bing in that eye, there's no other thing like it. It gives you a sense of life and a sense of vitality that you can't get with a soft light. It's a very hard light to shoot in, but he knew exactly how to move. You know, they say it's, uh, it's not where you put the light, it's where you put the shadow. And her use of shadows is very emblematic of that. I remember when he first shot me for LA style cover with that light, I was just like, oh my God, oh my God, I love it, I love it. You just fall in love with that light. It's Herb's light. Yeah, there we go. And head up. Yeah, there we go. That's it. And chin up just a little bit more. There's a strong current of sensuality running through everything that Herb has ever touched. Herb could do a male nude, and it was about the lines of someone's body. It didn't seem like porn or dirty. It seemed beautiful. With Herb, I felt like I was doing an athletic nude, which is different to me. Herb's approach to human sexuality was lyrical, romantic. He shot you so tastefully, and I trusted him. He has a sort of classical sense with his nudes. You know, you can see in Herb's work that he understood painting. You can see that he understood sculpture. Uh, there's some pictures of a man named Tony Ward that Herb created. I think Tony was covered in some kind of black cracked mud. He looked like a bronze statue of a god from the Etruscan or early Greek period. Herb loved lots of texture and sexiness, and I would grab the sand the salt water. I put it in a spray bottle and spray it in the hair and then, like let it dry and it just gave you like that insane texture. You know, you got it, there we go. But there's a spontaneity that runs throughout Herb's work that is very strong. Ritz preferred to keep things very simple in terms of his equipment. You know, he would of course say it's not about the equipment, it's really about what you do with the equipment. Whether he was using 35 millimeter or two and a quarter format, he used the same type of black and white film. He also never switched out lenses. And he shot without a tripod because he wanted the ability to follow the action. It was constant, like just running and 
diving. You sort of go around, it's like a dance, because he communicates something to you, you respond. One person takes a step, the other person takes a step. He would watch you, and he had an uncanny eye for picking out the exact right angle where you're going to look your best. Here we go. He kind of really saw you the way his pictures made you look. You know, he really wanted to bring out the best in that person. You just knew that the outcome would be really great. And when you realized how good he was going to make you look, that made you feel very at ease. A little smile there, it's not too serious. Yeah, there we go, like that, good, I can catch it. He was able to loosen people up, and they completely forget they're getting photographed by her breads. Yeah. It's a balance between energy and intimacy. The flow and the attitude was just so genuine. You can copy the lighting, you can copy the sort of superficial elements, but you can't copy that sort of connection that the photographer has to the subject. Beautiful, right there, Jay. Hold on. It's there. He could bring you out of yourself, make you feel something that he needed you to feel. And he could make you believe that you could do something that you thought you couldn't do. During this era, if Herb was doing the shoot and the Supergirls were there, it was like family time. That was Herb's house in Hillside. And Stephanie, Cindy, Tatiana, and I, it was just four of us. You know, all the girls just called Herb, see what's going on. Hey, what's up? Come over to Herb's. So Christy came to pick me up, and we looked at her like, how can you not be in this picture? And Herb was like, Christy, get in there. And she did. I can see it right now. Oh, come on, just get in there. Let's just do it. That's the last shot of the day. Let's get, you know, and he can get him to do it. I don't think it would insult him to be considered a commercial photographer, but I think it was important for him to be taken seriously. When he showed up on the set, he was there to make art. In Herb's opinion, they were all photographs that he was making solely for himself. Over the course of his career, he was always finding different ways to express himself in his photography that were him. You got it, hold it. That looks great. I would say that Herb went through an interesting evolution but not revolution. He just had lots of things happening where Herb was growing in, not just as a still photographer, but as a director in this other medium. He uh, was part of uh, the first movement of uh, photographers who became directors of uh, music videos and television commercials. And he did it in his usual style with natural light, with the handheld camera, with a sense of spontaneity in an elemental place. Chris Isaac, the sky, the clouds, and the two subjects are very sexual, sensual, but not too overly eroticized. We shot that video and we should not have been there. Some people think that behind me is like a blue screen of smoke or something. That's volcanic flow going into the ocean and causing steam to boil up about 30 feet behind me. And every once in a while, like a ball of lava would shoot up in the air like 200 feet. And we just kept shooting. We just, you know, like Herb would just go, okay, we'll just keep shooting. You could say that Herb's work was born of the desert and the sun of California, and it was also ended by those things. The earth from the mountains washes down into these lowlands in the rains, and then it dries. It becomes the cracked lake bed, which is covered in dust. When the wind comes up, you breathe that. Those are spores and elements that have been under the earth some of them for millions of years. Herb's body was vulnerable at the end with his uh, illness, and I think that that location contributed to his death because I think it was a very windy day on the last shoot. Everyone went home from that shoot, I was told, with some respiratory problems, with coughing and whatnot, and uh, that caused pneumonia for Herb, and, and that really was, was the end. And uh, I find that to be somehow poetic, but very sad. The loss of him on that day really kind of cut me off at the knees. I was in shock, devastated. It still breaks my heart that he's gone. I miss him greatly. No one can ever do what he did. Herb inspired me always. I miss him every day. Herb made manifest his ideas of beauty in this world, and that is a tremendous gift to all of us. Capturing that beauty was what he was about. If you saw it through Herb Ritz's eyes, the world was a much nicer place.
He was someone that inspired me because whatever he set his mind to, he did it. I can't think of anyone else that's doing what Herb Ritz did during his lifetime today. Um, someone who is having such an impact on visual culture. Well, I think with any artist, they really document their time and place. And so if you want to, uh, 100 years from now, look back and see what was happening in California, you can look at Herb's pictures. This generation right now has to see what Herb Ritz's work was about because it is something that I think when you open the fashion magazines, it's definitely missing. I think about those pictures and I look at them. You know, I think about Herb's spirit. I think about somebody who saw the world as a beautiful place. And I think, well, this is the way that we can see the world. I think that's a beautiful thing.